So what we want to do now is instead of 100, we go to 100,000. And one thing we really don't want to do is plot that whole thing because that's going to crash our server on Google, right? So we, we're not plot, we are not plotting the 100,000. Well, what we can do is we can call this some uh, variable. And I always, uh, for some reason, I like K. So we basically put this whole array into K. Yeah. So what we can do now is we produce K and K has now 100,000 trajectories with 100 time steps each. Okay. And so all we need to do now is we need to get K. And now here comes the indexing. We want all the final values of K. So there's a hundred thousand final values, you know? So if we go up here, these are all the final values, right? And so, so we want basically the hundredth time step of each of these trajectories. And then we draw a distribution over that. That makes sense. So what we can do is we can say K off. And so K is a two dimensional array, right? So we have the last time step of the, of the zero step. And then, uh, this one here basically says for each of those hundred thousand points, we want to do this. Yeah. So, so this K minus one comma colon basically tells us take all the last points of each trajectory. So when you say minus one in Python, um, it basically means take the last index. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, so in Python, you can actually go backwards with your indices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so when you say minus one, it actually takes the last one okay. of these. Yeah. That's basically, so for example, in, in, in C++ also, so you then have to actually find how long is my array and where, w w which one is my last index. And so we have to, you know, basically write something that does it. But what's so cool in Python is you just go minus one and it knows, oh, this is the last one. Like you don't even have to know how long that array is. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this case we know, but, but sometimes you might not. Right. Yeah. And so if you say minus one, it just goes, oh, just take the last one. Mm, okay. Do yeah. Minus two, you go take two from the end. And so that greatly simplifies often the indexing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a, it's a really genius idea. And it's a big step up from say, say, um, um, C plus plus where you can't do this. You always have to figure out what is the length of my array and then, and then put that in. So, so here we don't need to do this. We can just use minus one, which is fantastic. It's really easy. So now we've got all these numbers. So, so this, um, this K, uh, minus one colon should have a shape of 100,000. Yeah. So if we go dot shape, it gives us the shape of that. So can you see this is a vector of 100,000 elements? Now, all we need to do is just go plt dot hist, which is the histogram. And then let's just. I always like sort of my default is always to, to build a histogram with 40 bins and then we plot this and here we go. So <laughs> this is what, this is what this is. This is already the, the this is already the whole exercise done. So <laughs> you can see there's a distribution here where we mostly end up around the zero level. And then in, in react cases, we end up at plus 30 or minus 30 around there. And that's, that's basically the distribution of all the final prices that we may end up with. And you see, we have a hundred thousand trajectories with a hundred paths each. And this runs, as you can probably see, in a very, uh, a very short time. I mean, let, let's just check how long this takes just for this to run. Or we can actually just let's run it with a plot as well. And I mean, this is a huge amount of data, right? So when we run this, including the printing, let's take a little bit of time, but you know, it takes, but it takes 0 0.4 seconds 
for such a huge amount. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? You run it again uh, with a semicolon at the end. It doesn't do that. So that's, you know, that doesn't give us all this Matplotlib stuff. <laughs> so now we have 100 time steps and 100 samples or 100 uh, price charts or trajectories. 